Hello friends, this video on kinetic theory is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 14 before going ahead with part 15. Now that we have uh, derived the expression for pressure, let us justify the assumptions which we took before we started this. So the first assumption was the container containing the gas is a cube. So what do you think would happen even if this assumption is not true? Because obviously even you might be thinking that it is not necessary that the gas is always contained in a container which is a cube. Let us suppose that the gas is contained in a vessel which is of any arbitrary shape. But even for any arbitrary shape, you can always assume a small portion of that vessel in the form of a cube. Therefore, if you consider it that way, you can apply the calculations which we did above. That means, let the vessel, the shape of the vessel here is basically immaterial. Let it be of any shape, we can always consider a small planar area and continue with the above steps. So, th this is not going to affect it in any way. Right? The second assumption which we took was all collisions are neglected. Here, ignoring the collisions will not produce any wrong result or it will not produce any result which is something other than what we found. Because we saw that, what did we see in our derivation? We saw that the number of molecules hitting the wall in time delta t was found to be half n a v x into delta t. Right? Now, collisions are always random because the molecules will be moving and they will be colliding with each other. So, collisions are always random. So, even if we assume that there is a molecule with velocity vx, vy, vz, after collision, it has some other velocity. There will be another molecule which whose initial velocity will be something else and after collision, that molecule will have velocity vx, vy, vz. That's because the gas is in a steady state. So, in this case, if you see, in, in the end of the expression, vx square is something which actually matters to us and not vx. So the value of vx square will still remain the same because if there is some molecule whose initial velocity is vx, vy, vz, after collision the velocity is something else, there will always be another molecule whose initial velocity will be something else and after collision whose velocity will be vx, vy, vz. So that deviation is basically getting compensated. So, even if we neglect collision, it is not affecting the uh, results or it is not affecting our mathematical expression in any way because we are at the end of the day dealing with v square bar that is the average of squared velocity. So, which will still remain the same. So, only if the collisions happen too frequently, which, is, which doesn't fall under the normal conditions, only then it will get affected. So our calculations will stay unaffected as long as the collisions are not too frequent. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.